So UMAP. So I've been talking about UMAP a lot now for, for now. So UMAP stands for Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection. And it's based on the same concept as the TSNE uh, slightly, uh, but it changes a bit in a way that it uh, focuses on topological structures and in the multidimensional space, which is called simplices. So if points are connected in a, within a line that creates an edge between those two points, so these two points could be uh, a zero one or G or like your representation of your data set in a multidimensional space. So for example, this is a cell with the gene expression of all those genes. And then when you connect those points being, for example, a K and N, a graph. So these two cells, if they are in my nearest neighbor, we connect them. If we have, for example, these three cells and these three cells are well connected, then we create a, a, what do they call a simplicis. So this is a structure that now represents those three cells. Uh, and then we don't need to represent all the, the three cells. We just need that simplest, uh, simplicis to, to represent it. The same thing if you have more cells and, and so on and so forth, so that you can reconstruct your data in this mathematical model. But in general, this is also a, a graph in a way. But because of, of these simplices uh, notation in, in mathematics, then you can actually compute where the points should be assigned in, the, in your reduced space rather than putting them stochastically, um, which is done on TSNE stochastically. So now you can actually compute how far the points should be uh, beforehand. But let's have a visual also representation of, of the UMAP and compare a little bit with TSNE. So imagine that you have like these manifold in here, all those points assigned like this. If you just do a TSNE, you only try to find the closest neighbors to that cell. And then if you just connect the graph, you'll see that there are many points in the graph here that will be disconnected. And if they are disconnected like this in the UMA, in the TSNE, they will just put far, will be far apart. And that's why the, the distance will not matter. However, on, on the UMAP, uh, it, it stands for Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection. So you'll try to convert the real space to uh, this uh, uniform manifold so that you can actually try to convert the distance between these points to be the same as the distance between these points. Um, yeah, so the, def the, differences, the distances in the manifold will be the same, but not in the real space. Uh, that means that instead of using the same radius for every point, we will now consider like the distance between all the points so that every point has at least one connection or a couple of connections. So you can see now that the, this point now is actually connected to the other ones as well. So they, you create a map that actually can uh, connect all the points, even though they are not physically connected because here before we only, this one was completely isolated, right? this one as well, and this one are as well. But in, in this way, we can create also a, a gradient and perform this iteration over and over again. But now these points are even connected to the rest of the, of the graph. So that's the major optimization in UMAP that allows you to not only find what is the distance between the nearest neighbors, but also find what is the distance to the, the furthest point as points apart. And then when you create a graph, you have a fully connected graph with all the points. So just coming back a little bit to the uh, uh, representation that I showed before, if TSNE only cares about the distance between the nearest neighbors, the UMAP will also care about the distance to the other points. And that gives you an idea of the global embedding or how far these points should be from the, all the other points as well. Um, and because of that, you can pick, for example, two different data sets and run UMAP, and they will, in general, uh, overlay on top of each other like this. While for TSNE, the embedding will not overlay at all because it's very stochastic. In UMAP, since you calculate and you have exactly the same mechanism to generate the projection, the, the embedding of the cells will be fairly similar. Um, and these are just other plots showing exactly the same. So if you have two different data sets and, or, and you run two different runs of UMAP or TSNE or whatever other dimensional reduction method, UMAP will have the, kind of the same 
um, visualization. And that's good for reproducibility. And you'll see that a lot. If you change a little bit of the parameters, you will see a completely different map. But that's not usually true for UMAP. So as TSNE, UMAP also has so many hyperparameters that you need to, to think about. Because he also assumes that there is a, some sort of structure in the data. And the same thing also applies for TSNE or any dimensional introduction uh, technique. So if you, here you have the number of neighbors, which is one of the hyperparameters for uh, UMAP. And here is the minimum distance between points. And this data set is just random noise. But you can create many things or many artificial clusters from random noise. There's nothing in this data. So this is the true. There's nothing here. Uh, and this is how you can adjust your UMAP to predict or like try to find clusters. So be careful with this uh, on your data set. There is also no right or wrong uh, also in the, the parameters, which is the, the right. You need to find your data. And all that you find, for example, from a clustering or from biological knowledge, you see if that rep also is represented on your UMAP. Um, and also, there is also, uh, I'll recommend this link. There is more information about all the, the parameters that you can play with. And some of those are uh, mentioned in the lecture as well. So besides- Can I ask not, one thing yes. about this image? Yes. There's quite some difference in the size of clusters here based on the different yes. parameters. Does the size of the clusters then not matter? Uh, no, not like, in this one, because this is uh, just a random data set. It, it's just random noise. There's nothing there. And then by changing the parameters, for example, number of neighbors five, I will, uh, consider more the 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 sizes of the, the clusters to be five than with other uh, clusters further apart. So if you increase the number of neighbors to three hundred and twenty, then you increase the number of, of the, the the clusters. Let's say how many cells I can allow in a cluster. Okay. Yeah. And then you can trust the size of the uh, or like yeah. Yeah. You can trust the size. Yeah. Um, so UMAP, besides optimizing for also allowing um, measurement of the global and the local distances, you also uh, have a higher uh, speed compared to the other methods, but it's very similar to the Fourier transform TSNE. And here's, for example, an uh, example visualization of the UMAP, which is quite fairly similar as, as well for to a TSNE. So to keep in mind, uh, UMAP is also a nonlinear graph-based dimensionality reduction technique. It's current now, I think, the, the gold standard for single cell. It's very efficient. Uh, and you can also run on the top principal components, but you also can run on many different things. Uh, it's no longer stochastic because you now pre-calculate where the, the cells should be. It defines both local and global distances, can apply new data points to, to the embedding. Because now I know the global embedding, so assigning new points is easy. 